Hi guys, Paul Denegris here with part two of my day for night tutorial. So you may remember back in part one, uh, and there'll be a link to part one in uh, the description of this video, but you, you may remember in part one, we took this image, uh, which is just a daytime image of uh, kind of an abandoned warehouse, and we decided we were going to make this into a nighttime shot of sort of a bad guy's lair for a, an action adventure movie. And we went through a process that brought us to here, um, where we used some roto shapes and a couple of different grade nodes to kind of paint some light into different areas to make it look like it was lit. And I've gone ahead and done a couple more things in uh, this area that we didn't get to in the last tutorial. And obviously you could keep going, put you know lights in here and highlights on the environment out here and, and uh, lights on in this building back here and things like that. But you get the point. You can take this as far as you want. What I want to do today is I want, I want to address the sky. And the sky is always a problem, or very often a problem in these day for night shots, because the daytime sky and the nighttime sky look so drastically different. And to bring the sky down further to make it look more like night, I would end up having to crush everything in the shot way, way down. What I want to be able to do is separate the sky from my uh, the rest of my environment and and do it in a way that uh, requires as little work as possible. If you have listened to multiple tutorials of mine, you'll know that I call myself a lazy compositor because I don't want to have to do work. More to the point, I don't want to have to do manual labor if I can make my software do the work for me. So I want to look for a keying solution for this. And so I'm going to look at this image and I'm going to look at it really closely, and I'm actually going to look at a couple of different channels. I want to look at, right now I'm looking at RGB unified. I want to look at red, green, and blue separately. And I want to see what I've got. And what, what you're seeing is the, the relative saturations of colors in the red spectrum, the green spectrum, the blue spectrum. Obviously, blue, blue is probably going to be best because the sky is blue, and very often in a shot where um, the foreground uh, is a little darker in this view, you can actually pull a pretty decent blue key and just treat the sky as if it's a blue screen. But I don't think that that's really gonna cut it. We've got a lot of values. If you look at the blue values here and you look at the blue values in the building, we've got a lot that are really, really close. So I don't know that blue is gonna necessarily cut it. What I think I'm probably going to want to do is just do a, a luminance keyer. So I'm going to spawn another alpha channel setup off to the left over here and build an alpha for the sky. And then I'm going to copy it back into this stream so I can do something with it. Okay. So this will be the first time that I'm introducing in these tutorials the idea of alpha and RGB being handled separately. Right. So our RGB stream. Sorry, it looks like that, okay? The RGB stream looks like that. I wanna build a new alpha for it. Right now, that's what the alpha looks like. I actually wanna wipe this alpha out, and replace it with something else that is just going to be uh, appropriate to pulling the sky out, okay? So to do that, I really need to go back to square one and work with this original image. So I wanna use a node called Keyer. There's lots of different Keyers in Nuke, but this is a good one to start with. Okay, so I, I just put it off to the left. I know I said that, I, you know, nodes shouldn't go off to the left or pipes shouldn't go to the left. But for whatever reason, this feels right to me to go off to the left, build something, and then bring it back in uh, from the left, you know, as an A stream into this, this B stream dominant comp. Okay, so that's, that's kind of my thinking on that. Um, your mileage may vary. My... Uh, philosophy is if you as long as you keep your script organized you keep your node graph organized uh, that's gonna work if you don't follow my exact directions that's fine but please always keep B stream dominance right so A's are always on the left and B's are always uh, going down if you do that everything else should so, sort of fall into place all right so let's look through this key here and you're gonna see it's not really doing anything right now but remember I don't want to see RGB I want to see alpha so I'm going to view alpha only. And when I look at the alpha, what it's doing right now is it's basically taking the luminosity of the original image and turning it into an alpha. 
And this graph over here on the, on the right is going to give me the ability to fine tune this, okay? So if I start playing with the A side, I'm actually darkening areas, okay? So this is like, this is like playing with the black point on a histogram in After Effects, okay? So I can actually raise this quite far and push a lot of the building into silhouette, which is what I want. I also want to keep all this detail in the trees and all the little vegetation that's growing. I don't know if it's growing on the roof or if it's behind the, the building, whatever, but the last thing I want to do is have to roto complex shapes like this, okay? I'd rather build a keyer solution that gives me that stuff. And then if I have shapes, you know, like this, that are just simple arcs and straight lines and things like that, that I have to kind of rebuild with simple rotos, I'd rather do that, okay? So I want to get the edge of the building to look as good as possible, okay? So I'm trying to kind of get the building to kind of go as black as possible in this view. Uh, and then I'll grab the highlight side and I'll bring it down and I can crank up the highlights in the sky. Now I know what you're thinking, but Paul, white is opaque and black is transparent. Don't you want to make the sky transparent so we can put something else there? Yes, we're going to invert this. Don't worry about it, okay? Right now I'm just using the keyer output to get as close as I can to a black and white image, however that is arranged. It could be black in the sky and white down here. It could be white in the sky and black down here, but as long as I get there, then everything else can fall into place. So this is looking pretty good. It's not great. It's not great. I have problems. I got lots of problems in here that are causing me issues. There is another set of sliders here that often get overlooked, right? So that we've, we've adjusted A and B. There's also C and D that gives you a roll off on the other side. So let's say I wanted to bring some of the high end details back in the clouds, which I don't, but I could if I wanted to play with that. Uh, I'm gonna leave that completely alone. What I wanna do is just get this kind of as close as I can even if parts of the sky go black, right? Because I can always garbage map that out with a simple roto shape, which I'm going to do, all right? So I'm gonna get it something like that. I've got good detail in the trees, although I, I have sort of crushed them a little bit too much. And I've got good detail up here. And as long as I can get the white part of the sky so it's basically white all around the building. I'm in good shape, all right? So I'm gonna do something like that, okay? Kind of a happy medium. Um, and you just kind of get the hang of this, right? You can use this as uh, a keyer for different colors. I only ever really use it for a luminance key because there are better green screen, blue screen keyers elsewhere in Nuke, which we will get to in a future lesson. I really just use this as my default luminance keyer if I'm just trying to do just a straight luminance key like I am here, okay? So now that I've got that, let's just close that node. And let's, in order to set our black-white paradigm correct, let's just get an, in, an invert on here right now. So add an invert node so it's going to get us closer to what I want, okay? And that's pretty good. That's... Um, that's kind of what I want. So I obviously have to deal with this sky issue. Um, and then I have to deal with holes in the building and then all of this other stuff down here, okay? So <clears throat> to me, this is a, what I have now is an easier job than if I were to just strictly have to go and roto all the nooks and crannies on this tree and on the building and on the roof and blah, 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 all that stuff. I don't want to deal with that. All right, let's get some rotos down. So I'm gonna drop a roto node after this and I want to just do a little quick garbage mat around the top here to get rid of this stuff that is unkeyable. Close that up, it's gonna turn white. We will set it to black. Now we have a nice clean sky. Um, I also have a couple of little extraneous details that 
that didn't really survive the keying process. Now I could rebuild them with white shapes, like there's this little, I don't know if it's a twig or an antenna or whatever, and then there's this little puff of leaves that had a really, really thin, if I go back to my original view, has this really, really thin little stalk there. I could throw some white shapes down for those if we really want, um, which we might as well go ahead and do. So I'm gonna grab my cusped bezier. Just drop a little white mat there. And another one here. Ugh, super close, okay. We're at something like that. So I'm gonna view through this now. I got those little details back and I can feather them in just a, a smidge, just so they're not so hard edged, okay? Something like that. I then have to go and do similar things on the building, okay? So I've got issues in here. I've got issues in here. So what I wanna do is I wanna look at this. Looking at this doesn't help me, right? Because I've done an invert and it's inverted everything. Looking at this doesn't necessarily help me because uh, it's it's not, um, I, I can't really readily tell where I've got holes in the mat. So what I need to do is I'm just gonna temporarily put a copy node and the keyboard shortcut for that is K, because C is something else. And I'm going to attach it to just directly to the read node. When I view through this and I hit M, it shows me the mat channel, right? It shows me the mat overlay. In other words, the alpha has been turned red and it's just laid over top. This is gonna make it a little easier for me to be able to navigate this problem right here and this problem right here. And then from there, it's a lot of straight lines, okay? So I'm just gonna jump in here with a bezier and I'm just gonna do a shape that sort of roughly repairs this. And I'm going to take it down to here, and come across, and come up to here, 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 come up through here, there, there, and close it. Okay. And it's a little hard edge, so we'll just uh, we'll just feather it in just uh, another smidge, something like that. Okay. I'm also seeing what I didn't see before was I'm seeing this little schmutz here, so I really need to get in here with a with a smaller, a little more precise black mask and just kill that stuff. All right. And again, I'd rather do that than have to like roto this entire building. Because again, I'm a lazy compositor. All right, let's work on this area now. So I think I'll incorporate this pillar into here and then come up, rebuild this curve. Come down, grab that part. That's a hole in the roof, but I, I don't want to deal with holes in the roof right now. We're going to keep this simple. Come down here, close it. Uh, again, just feather it slightly. Okay, so that's feeling pretty good. Um, now I can just do a simple cusped shape for this face of the building, this little piece of the building, and then I can just really quickly throw in some shapes, right? For example, I could grab a rectangle and I can just do a rectangle like literally right up to practically where the sky pops in. Right, just right up to there. So now I've dealt with all of that noise down there that I, I don't have to deal with. Again, I'm trying to carve this up into simple shapes. Simple shapes are quick to draw and make my life easier. So now let's do this. And this is a nice straight edge, so I'm just gonna come across, come down, over and close it. Just make 
a little fine adjustment on that. So that feels pretty good. I need to close this hole. That feels pretty good. And then I think I can do one that just kind of does this and comes across the entire roof line, comes up, fixes this stuff. And I'll deal with this building separate, come down and close it. And that should fill in all that stuff, right? Then this building, another cusp shape, come over. Close it. And if I wanted to go in and worry about details in here, I could, but uh, I'm not going to worry about that today. All right, so that's not too bad. I mean, I did draw a bunch of shapes, but they're all simple geometric shapes. I didn't have to do any real complex uh, polygonal shapes like I would have if I went in and traced literally this entire building. Again, that's way more roto than I want to do. And it's definitely more roto than I want to do if this shot were in motion, right? If this camera were moving and, and this wasn't just a JPEG, if this camera were moving, I don't want to deal with all that roto if I can avoid it. Um, so I'm always going to look for solutions that get me there faster, okay? All right, now I've got it. Now I've got my, my alpha. Close all this stuff. I got my alpha, okay? So... This copy node that we use to, uh, to bring the alpha and the RGB together so we can view the mat channel should be a clue as to where we're going. Like if I look at this, what is it doing? It's copying channel RGBA.alpha to RGBA.alpha. So it's copying the alpha from A into the alpha of B, right? The alpha coming out of the read node is black. The alpha coming out of the copy is the same as the alpha coming out of this roto. So it's literally copying it over. You could look at it like it's injecting the alpha from this stream into this stream. So how we can use this now is if I disconnect this pipe, bring it over here and, in, and inject it after the merge, right? That merge that put our day for night look together. If I put it in after that, I'm now copying this alpha into this stream. So when I pre-mult, I've just, I've just killed the sky and put, pushed it completely black, okay? Because there's nothing there. But now I can merge this over a sky of my choosing. Just hold down Command and drag out a little, little dot to make a nice hard edge. And we're gonna throw down a merge. So now that I've got a merge down, I can put something back here. So let's say I just put it like constant and made that constant. I, I don't know why I would do this, but what if I made the constant red? I can merge that over, make the sky post-apocalyptic red if I want. Not that I'm going to, but you get the idea. So I can put anything back there. If I go grab a night sky and I've got one in my Dropbox over here, just grab this night sky, drop it in. Mm, it is... 2560 by 1600, so I'll just drop a reformat node to make it 1920 by 1080, and I can merge that in. So, yeah, that doesn't look good. I mean, it's kind of okay, but I'm not crazy about it. It looks patently fake, and that really breaks the illusion for me. I guess I could throw a grade on here and adjust it. The, the frozen shooting star kind of gives it away. Uh, I suppose I could grab a transform node and just kind of move it up, maybe get that out of the shot. Something like that. Maybe drop a grade node and gain it way the heck down. Something like that. That doesn't look bad. It's not great, but it's not bad. Um, you know, to me, particularly in urban areas, which this kind of is, you don't really see a lot of stars like that, so that's that kind of breaks the illusion for me. So let's just do something uh, a little simple that we can just cook up ourselves right here in Nuke. So let's add a constant. I had one in before, but let's add another one, right? And let's make this a really, really, really dark blue. In fact, it's gonna be almost black. So hold down Command or, or Control on your PC and uh, click the color wheel. And we're just gonna put just a smidge 
of blue in it. I'm actually going to put a little more blue in than I normally would, just so maybe you guys can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to merge that in. That's pretty bright. Um, let me take some blue out of there. Something like that. Go really, really dark, dark blue. Right? Just barely a little bit of illumination in it. And then I'm going to add a ramp. And a ramp is Nuke's equivalent to the gradient tool in, uh, in After Effects or, or Photoshop. And ramp's kind of funky because it gives you this 0 to 1 and defaults to a, uh, a linear ramp. And it always puts it right down here. But what I want to do is right now, if you go to color, right? So what it's going to do is it's going to go from the zero point is literally zero uh, in terms of opacity, right? So it's transparent. So it's letting the original uh, constant whatever, or whatever the ramp is comped on top of, it's allowing that through. And then it's smoothly transitioning to this color. So let's make this color nighttime in urban environments is very deep orange. So I'm going to do kind of this orange sky haze, you know, from kind of the lights of the city off in the distance. And I'm going to go back to the ramp tab. And again, to get to that, it's you go to the color tab and you've got a color selector. I'm going to go to the ramp tab and I'm going to take zero and I'm going to drag it up. I'm going to hold down shift to lock it. And then what I can do is I can decide how far up the, uh, the sky haze is actually happening. So uh, if I just raise this a little bit, I can create kind of this little sky haze. Okay. And you can play with the fall off right now. The fall off is linear. You can do P linear, smooth zero, smooth one, smooth two. If I just look at the ramp alone, you can see what each of them does. They each calculate just a little bit differently. So I'm going to do smooth zero. I kind of like smooth zero for this. Raise this up just a hair. And it's a little too saturated for me. So I'm just going to drop the saturation on the ramp. This would actually be a good time to fire up your HSV curves and that way you can just start taking saturation down. That feels pretty good. And I think I may do the same on my constant. Just take sat down. Just a skosh and take value down. Just a skosh. Something like that. There we go. So something like that. So I built kind of my own little sky. Um, the other thing you might notice is you might have some ch sort of chunky hard edges on, uh, on these keyed areas. And they do look a little funky. So an erode node will help a lot. Um, so I'm going to come back over here. And I'm actually going to put it before the roto node. I'm going to select the invert and hit type erode. And there's three erodes that pop up, fast, filter, and blur. Um, why there are three of these seems really unnecessary to me because erode filter actually, there are settings in the erode filter that get you to fast or blur without, uh, without too much of a hassle. So, uh, so if I put the erode on, you can see it has chipped away a, a pixel around the entire edge. But it's turned all of these little point areas into blocks, and that's because it's on a box filter. And this is what I was talking about. Box is exactly what the erode fast does, right? Because it's it's the fastest to calculate. You then also have triangle, quadratic, or Gaussian, which is the same as fil as erode blur. And we can raise this value, and usually I'll do like one and a fraction for something like this, just to you know take the literally take the edge off of these uh, these items. So you can see the difference when I turn that erode on and off. And that might be just a skosh too aggressive. Maybe 1.1 is 
all it needs. Something like that. Okay? So that finishes out the day for night tutorial. Like I said, you can put your own night sky back there, or you can brew up your own like I did here. It's totally your choice. Uh, but now you know a little bit more about the constant node, and you know a little bit more about the, uh, the ramp node, and you've been introduced to the luminosity keyer, uh, and the concept of building an alpha separate from RGB and then injecting it back into the RGB stream. So that's going to wrap up our day for night. We're going to move on to more advanced topics in the next tutorial. So make sure you hit like on this one. Leave me a comment if you enjoyed the tutorial and click subscribe so you don't miss any of my future new tutorials. I'll be doing much more of these uh, throughout the rest of the summer.